Hey folks, Dr. Groovy Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com here with our uh, annual uh, Do I Use Water on My Fingerboard? Do I Use Oil? Do I Use Lemon Pledge? And all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like to talk about this a lot. Um, if you remember, I am the original one and only guy who um, started the Tonewood debate. Yes, that was my fault. And it is my claim to fame because, yes, I'm that guy. Okay, anyway, I want to talk to you first of all, get a couple things out of the way with all this fun I'm getting ready to have um, because it's true. Um, despite what so many things say and what your eyes are telling you that things sound like. I'm going to show you a couple fingerboards. These are not necks, okay? Nobody has, um, I'll, I'll say about 0.0002% of the people in the entire world have a rosewood neck. They have a rosewood fingerboard, but not a rosewood neck. They do exist, and they're groovy. Um, yeah, they feel great, and blah, blah, blah. But what do they sound like? They sound like the frets that are on them, the strings being picked up uh, by the pickups. Uh, if the strings are against a fret, it sounds like metal against metal. So wood is not magnetic, therefore it plays zero part in your tone. Okay, here are two fingerboards. Ta da! Maple. 100% maple. Okay? Front and back. Okay, this one here, not maple on the back. Okay, this here's actually mahogany in the back and rosewood in the front. Okay, now guess which one is brighter sounding? That's right. <laughs> um, you guys are going to say maple's brighter sounding because it is a brighter color. Rosewood is darker, so it's supposed to be darker and warm. Um, actually, it's supposed to be the opposite for the people who are Tonewood believers. Um, the only time you'll hear the opposite of what I'm saying right now will be in um, forum chat rooms and here on YouTube. Um, just because you've got other 12-year-olds and people who act like 12-year-olds spouting out this information. Let me get you a, a quick little something. Okay. From the lovely folks over at uh, Guitar Player. Tonewood Tutorial. Everything you need to know about Tonewoods. Okay, yes, once again, my doing. Oh yeah, and let's... Uh, <laughs> Make America groovy again. Okay, I'm going to scroll down to, see, we got ash, basswood, carina, mahogany, maple, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going down to rosewood. Okay, and what it says about rosewood, as far as anything, it says, uh, rosewood makes for a very um, bright sounding guitar. A very bright sounding guitar. Not the other way around. Not a dark sounding or mellow or what have you. Um, they say it makes for a very bright sounding guitar and an expensive one too. That is uh, typically more of interest for looks and novelty rather than for tone. Okay. There you go. And this is... Uh, Actually, a correct statement, except for the bright part. Um, some people just believe what they believe, but most people will actually think that uh, maple fingerboards are somehow brighter on an electric guitar than the other way around. So we know that that's not true now. So <laughs> falling over stuff. Anyway, I'll fall over more stuff. I'm drunk. No, <laughs> I haven't been drunk since I was 21. Anyway, I'm going to sit here and talk to you now about a few other things. And like I said, this is going to be about the uh, what do you put on your fingerboard and why you should do it and what should you be doing, what you should not be doing. 
Number one, don't put anything on your guitar's fingerboard um, if you're using um, anything other than maple. If you're using maple, guess what? You don't have to do anything other than wipe the smudge off of it at the end of the night. That's about it. Okay, so yeah, use maple. <laughs> you don't have to worry about anything. Um, if you're like, oh, I just like the darker looking color of something, then get graphite, get a uh, rich light, get something that's just black, get ebony. It'll always look dark. Um, when it comes to rosewood, if you want it to look black or dark, uh, there's a couple ways to do that, and that is not oiling the thing up, okay? Yeah, that it, anything that gets wet, as far as wood goes, exposed wood, uh, will look great. It'll show the grain and be really cool looking. It'll be darker, and yes, it looks pretty as all get out, but that's all it does is it looks pretty, and um, people will tell you that you should... Actually, this will be Martin. People say Martin and Taylor and everybody else. They uh, say to make sure you do this once or twice a year. Put some kind of anything on there. My lemon oil or lemon pledge or anything. And so I'm going to trust them over you. Well, if God came along and told me my pecker was a sledgehammer. Um, sorry, I'm not going to believe it. <laughs> okay, now here's what we got. Uh, Pow Ferro fingerboard on a great strat here. Okay, you guys are yuck. Okay, if you put a bunch of anything wet on there, it's still going to come out looking like this because it's light fingerboards. You guys are yuck, yuck, yuck. That's not rosewood. No, this here is actually more expensive than rosewood and is supposed to be a better tone wood. Okay, so this is the better of the two for fingerboards supposedly if you want to make that dark you can use ink yes there are certain inks that are meant to make this black um, or dark brown whichever you want uh, you can soak that into or um, actually leather dye okay and that will make it the color you want it the ink takes a couple of the times doing it um, and a couple few days to make it happen, but you get great results. So if you want it to look black or very dark brown, um, the dark brown will actually show the wood grain and be nice and even um, and so forth. So if that's what you're looking for, fine. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the colors here and what's going on and then talk about the water, which is what I use, and I'll tell you why in a second. Here is rosewood on my Corvus, Gibson Corvus. This is great looking rosewood. Look at this. Um, get right in there as close as you want. Why does it look like this? Do I put anything on it? Water. I just play it a lot. Okay, that's why it looks this way and how flippin' rich. <laughs> the fingerboard looks. It's because I play it. Um, and I clean it off with water when I change strings. That's the secret right there. If you want something dark and fine looking like that, I will grab my last, no, this one. I'll just show you. That's the reason I got it out is look at the fingerboard here. See all that white stuff? Okay, there you go. You can see it in the grain. What is that? That is salt from sweat. Okay, and when you go to chain strings and you put some water on there, uh, that salt will dissolve and it'll be the color you want again. But right now it's quite light due to a bunch of salt stuck in them in the grain okay if I change strings right now and oiled it up um, it would look like this again in about a week of playing 
and I'll tell you how that happens. Okay. Da, 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 da. What happens is, uh, here we go. If you are to oil your fingerboard, okay, what happens is, <laughs> Mother Nature, okay, your body is made out of water and water and a lot more water. So when you're playing, what is sweat that you're putting all over your fingerboard? It is salt water, okay? Sweat, salt water. That's just your body depleting itself, you know, just oozing on your fingerboard. So you get salt deposits on grainy, you know, really loose grained um, fingerboards, rosewood. And if you have that, like I said, if you have uh, your oil on there, think of this old science thing that you learned. Oil and water do not mix. Water is heavier than oil. If you put in a glass water, pour oil in, or put oil first, then put water in, the oil always goes to the top. Every time. That's just the way it is. I don't care what kind of oil you put in there. Oil rises to the top. So here's what's going on. You oil your fingerboard and waste that. Then you go play, okay, over the next year, since you're not supposed to oil them except for once a year. Um, the water, when you're sweating, makes the oil go to the top. What happens with that? It gets on your fingers and it goes away. It rubs off. You go to clean your strings and stuff with a rag, that oil goes away. You play two or three nights, every last bit of the oil you put in to make it look cool is gone. Okay? So, um, how, how easy is this to understand? It's pretty easy. Okay? Again, you end up with all kinds of water in your fingerboard. I mean, soaking that thing because you're playing your little heart out and it's 125 degrees on stage. And there you go. You have salt deposits that will rise up and you have water that immediately, immediately, immediately displaces any oil you have on your fingerboard. It goes to the top and it gets on your fingers and you go wash your hands and you wash it away, you play some more. Um, any other oil that's left, it rises to the top. The water stays aside and hydrates the flipping tree. <laughs> it, it used to be a tree, it thinks it's still a tree. It doesn't want to be a guitar, but it's drinking up the water. It's spitting out your oil. <laughs> it doesn't want to be oiled, it's not a car. Okay, so that's what happens. Um, water is heavier than oil. Makes sense? Okay, so when I use a little bit, little bit of water to simply clean off the smut on my, or smudge or spooge that's on my fingerboards, and then I just go right back and dry it off, I mean, it's just a matter of uh, a quarter size drop of water on a, a rag, like an actual uh, microfiber rag, so it looks like it's really thick <laughs> uh, rug from the 70s. I mean, it's hardly any on there, but it cleans the heck out of it. And if I was to put anything on top of that, it would just stay on top if I was to try to put oil on there of any kind, because it would just run off again, because there's no room for it. The water is in there. Okay, is water safe for it? Of course, every company will tell you this. Okay, um, you need to humidify or dehumidify your guitar. It needs to be, uh, the humidity needs to be at a certain point, which is about 40 to 50% humidity. Okay, so if you have humidifiers in your guitar room, like I do here, 
to keep it at that set humidity. There you go. Water, 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 blasting at every single one of your guitars. And if you have anything as far as oil in all these guitars that are here, it runs right off because the water displaces it. Again, water is heavier than oil. It just flops off and the <laughs> oil drips down and it's done. Your guitar wants water. Everybody will tell you, okay, you have to put water in there. You have little things that you put in your case. Humidifiers. The inside of your acoustics, especially, want water. It's dry inside those things, big time. I'm going to tell you about that, too. Um, why you're thinking incorrectly. Um, some of you, I know you're right on board with me. Most of you are, like, freaking out again, as usual. Um, not understanding this. I Do I get tired of wasting my breath? Sometimes, but I'm going to reach somebody, and that's fine. Um, humidity, again, is supposed to be in your guitar. Water, 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 more water, more water, more water. Okay, again, it used to be a tree. It wants water. Okay, it does not want oil. <laughs> you don't change the oil in your guitar. Think this through, people. Yeah, everybody wants you to buy it, so they're going to tell you to use it because it's snake oil. It's not lemon oil. Okay, and but like I said, everything that one thing everybody can agree on is it needs to be hydrated. If it's too hydrated, yeah, that's going to warp and crap out on you, so you need to dehumidify it. But all the humidifiers they haven't put put those things all over in your guitar case. Why to put water in there so your guitar is in the guitar case forever and it's got water going to your guitar? That oil is just running off or just uh, coming off on the uh, fuzz on the inside of your guitar case. Okay, so again, 100%, 100 fact, water, heavy, oil, light. It runs right off. If you play your guitar at all, the oil, water. Okay, so if you have salt in those grooves, you just put water in there and salt dissolves and it will look pretty again. So, between string changes, put some little bit of water up and down there, just like the little amount of oil you do, and rub it in, then rub it right back off with the other part of the cloth. That easy, the salt look will go away, and your fingerboard will look like what it wants to. And again, if you want it to look black or brown, dye it with dye, <laughs> or with the uh, ink. You can have any color fingerboard you want. I've got them, um, all the maple ones, you can definitely have any color you want. Um, it is really cool to actually cover your rosewood in the same um, lacquer as they, the polyurethane that they put on maple fingerboards. It looks great then, you know, because it's just, it gets wet and then it just stays that color underneath the um, clear coat it's a beautiful thing everybody should actually do that and you wouldn't have to worry about any of this uh, Rickenbacker does it so if you ever look at some of their darker uh, fingerboards they're clear coated over yeah so they, they have that right. They can't make a guitar that sounds good, but by God, at least they understand, you know, how to keep a fingerboard looking good that is a dark one. Okay, now here's the rest of it. The rest of the story. Okay, we have rosewood. Okay. Fingerboard. That's a wash burning thing. We have rosewood. We have rosewood. The milky got underneath there. Milky look, but we have rosewood, 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 and this is the thing that um, nobody understands. Okay, the fingerboard, rosewood. You're all going to argue about what to do with that. Okay, um, you're going to oil it because 
um, everybody tells you to so that you'll buy their snake oil. Now, if this rosewood really needs oil, it has to have oil, ooh, okay, your fingerboard could look like this, okay, if it had that clear coat on it. That's exactly what it would look like. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Flipping amazing looking. So it should be that way instead of this that you're always having to mess with all the time. It really should be clear coated. Okay, but if you need oil here, that means the sides and the back of the guitar that are rosewood, they need to be oiled as well. Okay, so at least once a year, twice a year, you need to somehow take all the strings off, get inside and put that same oil inside. Why? Because if your guitar honestly does need oil on the rosewood, you must put this exposed rosewood that is everywhere on the guitar. You need to oil it. It, it doesn't have to just go for the fingerboard here. It has to be, if you need oil, you better oil the damn guitar on the inside because it needs it, right? Because that's what you think. That's what you've been told. No, it needs water. It needs a humidifier. They put the humidifiers directly inside here. They hang in here. They sit there and they put water in it. So that's right there tells you that they've been feeding you crap all this time and they want you to buy more and more oil and oil and oil then you play a couple times it rises to the surface it goes away okay so you need water and then you need some water I'm not telling you to take a shower with your guitar just use your flipping braid okay again wouldn't that look awesome on your axe um, maybe think about that next time you get some new frets put on say hey can you put a couple clear coats of this on my fingerboard then put some nice frets on there so that's about what I have to tell you is um, dark colored fingerboards does not mean that they are exceptionally bright sounding or exceptionally dark sounding um, again and that's on an electric guitar um, because wood is not magnetic and that's period. It does not affect anything on your electric guitar. Um, your pickup magnets pick up instantly the sound of your strings, not what they're hooked to, you know, the body of the guitar and so forth. T tone wood on an electric guitar makes zero difference, not a, not a pubic hair of difference, none. It makes no difference, again. I am the uh, uh, person who came up with this whole tone wood debate thing, and I will continue with it as far as I have to. But it is what it is. I've already won. It's already been proven so many times, except for the people who are in the under 80 club. That's an IQ, 80 and below. And that, that's been a fun one. So again, what do you think? It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> I just told you the truth about everything. Are you guys going to use up all of your oil to oil all of the rosewood inside your acoustic guitars? Again, it would make sense if you have to do that. You have to do it to all this in here that looks so flipping dry. Okay, the humidifiers in here will keep it moist so it doesn't crack and everything. I'm in the desert. So yeah, you really gotta hit them with the water in here. And again, water. Everybody tells you, water, Martin, uh, Taylor, everybody, they're always like, but they say to use oral. They want you to buy their oral for the guitar. But again, you would have to, in order to make sense of that whole hype bullshit, you would have to oil the rosewood on the total inside of your guitar if any of this was true. Again, it's about water, 
water, water. You don't water. It, you just simply clean the flipping guitar, wipe it off. It's as easy as that. You'll have to do it the next time you change your strings. It's easy. Just do prevented, uh, preventative maintenance. Wipe off the crap <laughs> and go about your day. Um, that's it. Simple. I'm out of here. You guys try to be groovy and try to understand again that oil is lighter than water so when you turn on your humidifiers and use the humidifiers that 100 percent of guitar makers in the world agree that you must have water it displaces the oil 100 percent the oil will be gone i will if i put oil on here right now hung it up let it sit there for about five days it would be gone because I run humidifiers it just takes it out of there it goes away it goes to the surface and it runs off that's what oil does when you add water to it that's all you gotta know okay you guys stay groovy and stay smart later wait a minute what key are we in no 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 no